Shalom, 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 Israel. This is uh, Captain Paul Israel from Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC. And today is the Mosai Yah's new moon feast day, okay, for April the 20th of 2023. Again, today is going to be the Mosai Yah's feast day event for the new moon lesson, okay, for April the 20th, 2023. Okay, so. Uh, Israel, get out your pen and notepad for this particular lesson on the Mosai New Moon Feast Day. And the lesson or the topic is going to be on no condemnation in Yahshua's name, biblical understanding. Okay, Israel, today's class topic is going to be on no condemnation in Yahshua's name, biblical understanding. Today is going to be a good class lesson to discuss due to the fact that many of our people who are the blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans and also, and also those that are scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth. They believe that they can just say the name Jesus and they're going to be saved or they can convert over to Christianity faith and be true believers of Christ. And then they can be converted over and they don't have to keep no laws anymore. Right. No, that's wrong. That's what religion world has been telling our people that they don't have to rehearse the righteous acts. They don't have to keep the commandments because they are teaching their congregation that Yahweh son, Yahshua HaMashiach, or they're teaching their congregation in these religions. They're teaching their congregation that Jesus, right, died on the cross. So you don't have to worry about no commandments no more. Right. But according to the Hebrew understanding of the Bible and its proper understanding, we get the understanding that Yahshua promoted the commandments. Yahshua encouraged his people who were the children of Israel to keep Yahweh's commandments so they can inherit eternal life. So it's a difference in doctrines. OK, so it's a doctrine of truth and there is a doctrine and there is a doctrine of lies. So we're going to. Break this Bible down piece by piece in a short amount of time frame so we can get straight to the point on what the uh, no condemnation in Yahshua's name. Biblical understanding is getting into. OK, so we're going to start out in the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse one, that, uh, of course, the modern day pastors that's in the Christianity faith are pulling from to justify them not promoting Yahweh's commandments. So this is the particular verse that the Christian churches or the Christian pastors are using that actually spread this one particular verse and close the Bible after that. Right. So now the sheep who are the children of Israel are basically are confused in these last days. OK, so when we go to the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse one, and we do understand in general that this was Apostle Paul writing to our people that was living in Rome. OK, because we had the children of Israel dispersed living in Rome. OK, which is in Italy. OK, so we got the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse one. It says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you don't know what the spirit is in this understanding in this particular verse, how would you understand what this particular verse is getting into? So this is why you have to read the Bible precept upon precept, line upon line. So we got to break this understanding down in Romans. We got to break this understanding down in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So when you come into Yahshua HaMashiach understanding, you're not walking after the flesh. The flesh in this understanding goes into sin. Okay, so when you're walking after Yahshua HaMashiach, you're supposed to be that new light. You're supposed to have a new understanding. You're supposed to be not walking after sin, but after the spirit, but after the spirit. So now we have to break this Bible down to get what is the spirit that you're supposed to walk after of. So now we have to find out what is the spirit that you're supposed to walk to or walk after to. OK, if you're not supposed to walk after the flesh, which is sin, but it said, but after the spirit. So we got to get to understand what is this spirit that we're supposed to walk after. OK, and this is what modern day pastors are not doing, breaking down what is the spirit of this Bible. So now we go to the next understanding we go to the book of romans chapter 7 verse 14 
They get the understanding of the spirit. Okay, what is this spirit that uh, Apostle Paul was pulling from in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 that we're supposed to walk after? Walk after the spirit in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. So now we get an understanding in Romans chapter 7 verse 14 of this spirit. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, so under sin. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You see this, Israel? It says, for we know that the law, that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So you see this, Israel? So for we know that the law is spiritual. So the law of the Most High is the spirit. So Romans chapter 8 verse 1 again. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, talking about who walk not after sin, but after the spirit, but after the laws, after Yahweh's laws. So now we got to understand what the spirit is. It's the laws of the Most High Yah. Okay, it's the laws of the Most High Yah. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. So we're going to go a verse down from what we previously pulled from in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Okay, so now that we know that the law is the spirit that Apostle Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. And we're going to pull other precepts that back that claim up. Okay, and they all going to say the same thing in these different um, books. Okay, Romans chapter 8 verse 2. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua HaMashiach have made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, so it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua HaMashiach have made me free from the law of sin and death. So it says, for the laws of the Most High, which is his commandments, is the spirit of life in Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what it's saying. Have made me free from the law of sin and death. So now when you join Yahshua HaMashiach with the laws of the Most High, now you become free from the law of sin and death. Now we got to get the understanding where Apostle Paul is saying, made me free from law of sin and death. With, with, with law, it didn't say laws plural, it said law, that's singular. So which law has made the children of Israel to be free of sin and death? Okay, because you know, in general, when you broke certain laws in the laws of Moses, you were sentenced to death because of that particular sin. But not all of Mosaic laws resulted into death. Okay, certain laws, you can atone for your sins with the animal sacrifices to be forgiven. But certain laws that were broken under the laws of Moses resulted to death. That's what Apostle Paul is getting into. Okay, for the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua HaMashiach have made me free from the law of sin and death because Yahshua HaMashiach is that perfect sacrifice to atone for those certain sins that was unforgivable under the laws of Moses. Okay, there were certain sins that was under the laws of Moses that could not be forgiven for and that particular person blood had to be shed to cover that manner of sin there was no animal sacrifice to atone for that particular sin of that particular person that committed that certain sin under the laws of Moses okay that's what that's getting into now we go to Romans chapter 6 verse 11 okay Romans chapter 6 verse 11 it says, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto Elohim through Yahshua HaMashiach, our Lord. So again, we supposed to be dead unto sinful deeds, right? We're not supposed to continue doing sinful acts once we become awakening and get the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach's ministry and his true sayings of what the Bible is saying is proper context on what Yahweh brought Yahshua here on earth to do once we get the understanding we're not supposed to be dead indeed unto sin we're not supposed to be still living in sin once we come unto Yahshua HaMashiach we're supposed to have that good conscience unto Yahweh's righteousness that's what Apostle Paul is saying. 
So now we go to Romans chapter 6, verse 12. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So again, as you can see, Apostle Paul is commanding the people that's living in Rome, right? He says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Because again, Apostle Paul never condoned the children of Israel to stay in their sin. Never did. Okay, so that's a lie that's being pushed in the Christian church. You know, they don't really break these verses down like this. So Apostle Paul is saying, once you come unto Christ, there should be a change of character, change of conduct according to Yahweh's commandments. That's what he's saying. We should not obey the lusts and the desires of this world because the lust comes from worldly understanding. We're supposed to be operating on the spirit of the Most High by reading this Bible, learning the spiritual understanding of Yahweh's righteousness through his son, Yahshua HaMashiach's spirit. Okay, that's what Apostle Paul is getting into. Okay, as you can see, Apostle Paul never condoned our people to stay in their sin. Never did. This is the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 15. It says, Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. What is Apostle Paul talking about? He says, Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Because I stated earlier, under the Mosaic laws, there was certain laws that was put in place that if you broke those laws, you was put to death. So it says for where no law is, right? It says for where no law is, there is no transgression. So now it's a certain law that penalizes the children of Israel to be worthy of death. But now when this particular law in the Mosaic law is put to the side or put on pause, you are now not going to get the transgression meaning you're not going to be sentenced to death based upon you breaking that transgression now i'm going to give the understanding what this is getting into okay when we go into romans chapter 4 verse 15 where it says because the law worketh wrath for where no law is there is no transgression so we got to get the understanding which law of the mosaic laws worketh wrath worketh wrath so this is why you got to understand the mosaic laws which law out of those 613 commandments worketh wrath from the most side okay you're gonna get the understanding okay we're gonna get the understanding okay we're gonna get the understanding of which law worketh wrath okay so now we're gonna get the understanding which law worketh wrath okay so we go so we go to this we got to figure out which law work of wrath under the laws of Moses. And this is what uh, the Christian churches are not teaching their congregation. Okay, they're not teaching their congregation this understanding right here. Okay. So again, we're going to go to this PowerPoint slide right here. It says Yahweh's 613 laws in five categories. So Yahweh's laws is basically summarized into five different categories okay so this is what the modern pastors are not teaching so the law we have to figure out what law worketh wrath out of the mosaic laws okay so now yahweh 613 laws in five categories so under the mosaic laws right that we got the understanding of in the old testament it had the dietary laws the ceremonial laws the civil laws the moral laws and the sacrificial laws so out of these laws right out of these five categories which one you think pertain to wrath of yahweh's wrath which which out of these five categories pertain to yahweh's wrath if a person did not keep yahweh's laws correctly on those certain penalties okay and the answer would be 
the sacrificial law, as you can see. So again, Yahshua's blood put the sacrificial laws on Paul's. So sacrificial law is what is the law that worketh wrath. So under Yahweh's sacrificial laws, guess what? The children of Israel was getting put to death under based upon certain sins that was unforgivable under the laws of Moses. So Yahshua's blood, which was shed, was to be an atonement, right, for the children of Israel so they can cause them to do what? Return unto the Most High by repenting and learning Yahweh's law, statutes, and commandments without that transgression or penalty under the laws of Moses understanding if they fell short okay so what Yahshua's blood did was put the sacrificial laws on Paul's so the children of Israel can repent properly okay so this is what this is getting into so the sacrificial law is that law that worketh wrath okay so that's what that's getting into Israel so this is why we got to get the understanding so we go back to Romans chapter 4 verse 15 because the law worketh wrath or because that sacrificial law worketh wrath for where no law is there is no transgression. So now Yahshua's blood is shed at the time when Apostle Paul is writing this. Okay so Yahshua's blood has already been shed when Apostle Paul is writing this particular verse right here. Okay it says because the law worketh wrath for where no law is because the sacrificial law was put on Paul's. There is no transgression. So now you, the children of Israel, have chance to repent of those sins that was not forgivable under the laws of Moses. Now, we're going to pull the understanding further when we're going to get Yahshua speaking similar things. Okay, of him being that sacrifice to atone for the sins of Israel to put that sacrificial law on Paul's. So Yahshua put himself on that sacrificial understanding to atone for the Israelites. This is in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 26 of Yahshua HaMashiach having a Passover feast day event with his disciples. Okay. So Yahshua HaMashiach was keeping Yahweh's commandments. Uh, this is the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take it. I mean, it's like, and as they were eating, Yahshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. So again, the bread was what? The representation of Yahshua's body. That's why he said, take, eat, this is my body. And we know, of course, the disciples were Israelites, not all nations. The disciples of Yahshua HaMashiach were Israelites. So Yahshua is putting in the metaphorical sense with that bread as far as being his body to the disciples to take and eat. Okay, to get the understanding of what this is getting into. Okay. So again, this is why we got to read this Bible in its proper context. Okay, we got to read this Bible in its proper context. Okay, so now we about to so now we about to um pull why Yahshua used his body as a representation of this particular bread in in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 26, okay? Why did he do this? Now we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 to get the understanding of this law that Yahshua body by being sacrificed was to be an atonement for or to cover. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 is going to be proving that the sacrificial law is what was the law that Yahshua was coming to what? Put on Paul's with his blood being shed on that cross. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 to prove it. It says, For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. 
You see this, Israel? It says, for the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, sacrifices. Okay, and this is in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. So the law that pertained to Yahshua HaMashiach putting on Paul's was the sacrificial law, which the children of Israel did year by year continually. Okay, this is that understanding. So now we go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, the few verses down from the previous Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 verse. Now we're in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, understanding to, to prove that the sacrificial law is what Yahshua atoned for. Okay, so we could be covered under his blood, okay, for repentance. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. You see this, Israel? And this is red letters. This is Yahshua HaMashiach's words. Okay? For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And we know the people that was being referred to as the ones being under sins, right? That would be the children of Israel. So Yahshua's blood was to usher in the New Testament or that new covenant agreement with the house of Israel. Okay. Which goes according to that understanding of that sacrificial law because Yahshua HaMashiach body was that sacrifice. Okay. Which we got the understanding in Matthew chapter 26 verse 26. This is my body. This is what Yahshua is saying. Yahshua's body is going to be used for a sacrifice to atone for the sins of Israel. This is what Matthew chapter 26 verse 28 was getting into to usher in the understanding of that New Testament or that new covenant agreement, which hasn't been established yet as far as us being under right now. Okay, Yahshua HaMashiach, New Testament or new covenant agreement is going to be under his reign on earth. That's when the new covenant or the new testament is going to be implemented when Yahshua HaMashiach is ruling the earth. Okay? That's a future event. So now we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. Right? The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 is also going to explain what I just said earlier. That you have to have blood to be shed for uh, by the law to usher in repentance. Okay? The understanding of that. Uh, but it says Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission like I was saying earlier from the Mosaic law understanding under the Mosaic laws to be forgiven for certain sins what had to happen blood had to be shed either by the animal sacrifices or based upon that particular person's sin their own blood had to be shed. To cover that sin that was done under the laws of Moses. But Yahshua's blood was shed to atone for the manner of sin that was not forgivable under the laws of Moses. Okay, you get the understanding in Israel? It says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Purged with blood. So the sacrifices of animal sacrifices had to atone for the sins of Israel in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant understanding. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So if there was no blood shed in general under the Mosaic laws, there was no forgiveness of sins. That's what they're saying right here. In this context, understanding in general, Yahshua HaMashiach's blood was shed to cover the whole house of Israel's sins. So now we could be accepted unto the Mosiah through his son now. Okay? Not necessarily through Moses, but through Yahshua HaMashiach. Okay, so it's basically a transition. Moses at one point was the mediator between the children of Israel and the Mosai. Now it's Yahshua HaMashiach is the mediator between Yahweh and the children of Israel. Okay, it's just a change over from position. Okay, so we're going to prove that under Yahshua HaMashiach's blood being shed we now can be forgiven but under the mosaic laws there was no forgiveness on certain sins there was no animal sacrifice that 
There was no animal sacrifices to atone for certain sins that was not forgivable under the laws of Moses. Okay, so there were certain sins that could not be sacrificed by animals to atone for the sins of certain people in Israel. Okay, I'm going to prove it. Okay, we go to Leviticus chapter 24, verse 17, which is the Old Testament under the Mosaic Law's understanding that it was certain sins that you could not do an animal sacrifice for to be forgiven. So this is why you need Yahshua HaMashiach's blood to be shed or needed Yahshua HaMashiach's blood to be shed to cover you. Okay, so if you are guilty of this, you can repent. Okay, uh, Leviticus chapter 24, verse 17. It says, and he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. You see this, Israel? Notice, there's no mention of no animal sacrifice in this understanding. There's no mention of you just uh, going to jail, getting locked up in prison, and you don't have to worry about the penalty of death. No. It says, and he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. This is under the Mosaic Law's understanding. So, like I said earlier, there was no animal sacrifice for certain sins. Okay, that's mentioned in the book of the laws. Okay, when we go to the Old Testament understanding. So again, you needed Christ's blood or Yahshua HaMashiach's blood to be shed to cover you if you did kill any man. So now you can repent of this deed. Okay, to have another chance of life. Okay, but under this Mosaic law prior prior. Before we get to Yahshua HaMashiach dying on the cross, there was no animal sacrifice to cover you for this particular sin right here if you kill anybody. Okay, so this is the benefit of Yahshua HaMashiach dying on that cross to now you can repent from doing a particular murder. You can repent of these things if you are guilty of that understanding under Yahshua HaMashiach. Now, I'm going to give you another understanding of the benefits of Yahshua HaMashiach's blood being shed to atone for your sins so yahshua again yahshua's blood was not to be shed so you could continue doing the sin it was a, a sense of stopping and renewing your mind to learn how to not murder learn how to not murder anymore or learn not how to do those sins anymore okay so that's what the purpose of yahshua hamashiach's blood being shed for the children of israel to now have a more consciousness towards yahweh's righteousness okay so now we go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, to get another consequence under the Mosaic laws prior to we get to Yahshua HaMashiach down on that cross for our sins to be forgiven. But this is under the Mosaic laws, okay? Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So again, there was no animal sacrifice to atone for homosexuality. As you can see, if a man lie down with another man as he lied with a woman, he shall what? Be put to death. Because they both committed an abomination. The, the man and the other man committed an abomination. Same goes for if a woman lie down with another woman, that's considered an abomination in the Most High Yah's eyes. And they supposed to be what? Put to death under the laws of Moses. But not under Yahshua HaMashiach, right? Under that atonement for your sin understanding, guess what? You can now repent from homosexuality under Yahshua HaMashiach's understanding. Okay, you now can repent from being a homosexual. But under the Mosaic laws, prior before we get to Yahshua HaMashiach understanding, you were put to death. Okay, there was no animal sacrifice for this particular sin of homosexuality. Now we go to another law. That you was not forgiven for. Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. To get the understanding of. Another law. That you was not forgivable for. If you were guilty of these things. Under the Mosaic law. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. Thou shalt fear Yahweh thy Elohim. And serve him. And shall swear by his name. So the, according to the laws of the Mosai. You supposed to be fearing the Mosai Yah. You're supposed to be calling on Yahweh's name, okay, when you serve and worship him. You're not supposed to associate yourself with any other uh, idols out here, okay? You're not supposed to associate yourself with any idols out here. Uh, let me go to, 
Let's go to the next verse. We're going to go to the next verse. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 14. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. So under Yahweh's laws, under Mosaic law understanding, guess what? The children of Israel were not supposed to go after the other gods of the other nations, which is going into religions. Okay? This is the judgment for the children of Israel following the customs and the religion of the other nations. We're going to get the judgment in the next verse. Okay, and this is why we needed Yahshua HaMashiach blood to be shed so we all can be forgiven for this particular act or this particular sin that was conducted if we did do this. This is the penalty that a lot of our people was supposed to be a part of. Okay, if we did not have Yahshua blood to be shed. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 15. It says, for Yahweh the Elohim is a jealous Elohim among you. Least the anger of Yahweh thy Elohim be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You see this, Israel? So, if Yahshua blood was not shed on that cross for us, we will all be put to death in general as the children of Israel. We have to be destroyed from off the face of the earth because worshiping other gods, worshiping other deities, you're supposed to get put to death point blank period there was no animal sacrifice to atone for this sinful deed so now our people who are being referred to as the lost sheep of the house of israel they are primarily in idolatry or worshiping other religious practices or following other theology from the other nations But when we do that as a people, we supposed to get put to death in general under the laws of Moses. But now under Yahshua HaMashiach, which he atoned for the sins of Israel to be that perfect sacrifice so we can now repent and now turn away from that evil act so we will not be sentenced to death. That's the benefit of following Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah's righteousness and his pattern of good works through Yahweh's word and his righteousness that he set forth to our forefathers. Okay? So we if we follow so if we follow Yahshua HaMashiach ways, we follow Yahweh's ways as far as his commandments, we won't have no condemnation, right? Because we turn away from the wickedness. Okay? But again, as you can see, Israel, following religion, following idolatry practices of the other nations, we're supposed to be destroyed from off the face of the earth. Point blank period. So that's why we have Yahshua's blood to be shed, right? So we can what? Repent. Not continue doing this deed of staying in religion world. Okay? If you're staying in religion world, you're going to be what? Destroyed from off the face of the earth. Because when Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming, the sacrificial law is back in full effect. Okay? Again, the sacrificial laws of the Most High Yah is going to be back in full effect. When Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming. And this is why you have the term called Judgment Day. Okay. So. Now we got the understanding. What was the benefit of Yahshua dying on that cross. Okay. Because it says Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 14. Ye shall, ye shall not go after other gods. Other gods of the people which are around about you. So we are not supposed to go after no religions. Because the other nations who are not Israelites promote wickedness of these fake gods. Okay, you look at all these nations outside the nation of Israel. As far as outside of the children of Israel, the other nations, they or the other nations or the Gentile nations, they primarily what do pagan practices. They worship other gods that are not real. Okay, so this is what the children of Israel are not supposed to be following after. 
Okay. So now we go back to the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. The New Testament understanding. And let's see what Peter who was one of the disciples of Yahshua HaMashiach is going to tell the children of Israel in Jerusalem. Let's see what Peter is going to tell the children of Israel in Jerusalem. Is Peter going to say you don't have to keep no commandments no more because you're under Christ? Or is he going to say you have to repent? Okay, turn from your evil ways. Repent means to change, to be renewed. Okay, Acts chapter 2 verse 38. So this is the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So Peter is saying, repent this is in the book of acts chapter 2 verse 38 this is in the new testament okay this is what modern day christian pastors are not teaching their congregation okay as peter said because peter is the head apostle of those 12 disciples understanding right he's the head right he's the top disciple right then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of yahshua hamashiach for the remission of sins and of course the people that peter was talking to were the hebrew israelites in jerusalem and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost so you're going to receive that knowledge of the hebrew understanding you're going to receive the truth okay once you repent properly so peter never commanded the children of israel to stay in their sins or to stay doing what they was doing and then just say the name Yahshua HaMashiach. No, he said you have to repent, meaning change your ways. Be renewed in your mind with, in turn, I mean, with the understanding of Yahshua HaMashiach in mind. So you can be forgiven of your sins that were not forgivable under the laws of Moses. Because now you have Yahshua HaMashiach atoned for your sins that was not forgivable under the laws of Moses in general. So now you can repent of those evil deeds that you did that was worthy of death. So this is what Peter is saying. Okay, so this is why we have to break this Bible down piece by piece. Okay, so we get the definition. So we're going to get the definition of the word repent okay so this is the king james dictionary uh definition of the word repent which we pulled in the book of acts chapter 2 verse 38 okay it says uh repent it says to feel pain sorrow or regret for something done or spoken as to repent that we have lost much time in idleness or sensual pleasure to repent that we have injured or wounded the feelings of a friend a person repents only of what he himself has done or said it says number two to express sorrow for something past okay and the key point i want to get out of the word repent is this number three it says to change the mind once we uh of course try to zoom in a little bit it says to change the mind in consequence of the inconvenience or injury done by past conduct so the key point I want to get out of it to change the mind. So repentance is a change of the mind. So you were once a sinner, now under Yahshua HaMashiach's understanding, through Yahweh's spirit, now you're supposed to have a change of mind. So now you're supposed to learn what Yahweh's law, statutes, and commandments was talking about. Okay. Um, and also... It says, number five, it says, in theology or, I mean, it says, in theology, to sorrow or be pained for sin as a violation of God's holy law, a dishonor to his character and government and the fathers. Okay, I don't have to read that. Okay, so in general, the key point of repentance is to change. Okay, it's a changing process. That's the point I wanted to get out of the definition of repentance. Okay, so this is what Peter is commanding the children of Israel to do in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. So again, the disciples of Christ or the disciples of Yahshua HaMashiach 
taught a different ministry than the modern day pastors of today are teaching their congregation to stay in their sin and wait on the coming of the son of the most high because if because if, if the pastors are not teaching yahweh's commandments they are teaching sin to our people so as you can see yahweh elected certain men right to teach the children of israel to what repent to turn away from the evil ways of the world See, the Christian churches and all these religions promote evil to the world by encouraging pagan practices, encouraging idolatry practices that go into idol worshiping in these religions, which go contrary to Yahweh's commandments. Okay, Israel. So again, Israel, as you can see, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. So I had to just bring this out, Israel, to give our people the understanding of this part one lesson of no condemnation in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach understanding on the biblical understanding okay so this is just part one of this lesson okay so we're gonna go branch further into this understanding so hopefully you got the understanding that Yahshua HaMashiach blood was to be shed for the children of Israel to atone for those sins that was not forgivable under the laws of Moses because those certain sins under the laws of Moses was a sentence to death okay but under Yahshua HaMashiach's understanding, now we can repent of those evil deeds to now change and have a new mind according to righteousness. So, so now we basically have a second chance to get closer to the Mosai versus just staying in the world in the religion concept or any lustful desire that we have on a worldly stance and being far away from the Mosai. Now we have a mediator, right, to get the acceptance unto Yahweh through his son Yahshua HaMashiach spirit and name and also his love for the children of Israel to get closer to the Mosai okay so this is what we teach in the Hebrew understanding we teach Yahweh's commandments through Yahshua HaMashiach spirit and name okay stay tuned Israel for no condemnation in Yahshua's name biblical understanding video okay so this is going to be part two lesson on this video coming soon Israel hopefully Israel hopefully you got part of your question answered on this particular one verse on Romans chapter 8 verse 1 where it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua HaMashiach who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so hopefully I answered part of the question that you probably was trying to get uh, the answers on but we're going to get further understanding what Romans chapter 8 verse 1 is getting into when we get further understanding on this particular series okay other than that, Israel, stay tuned for more videos on Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC YouTube channel. Shalom.